Hi there and welcome to this video on GCSE Biology for the AQA specification. Focusing on the topic of organisation of an ecosystem and in particular on decomposition. I'm Shumana from StudyMind where we help you revise GCSE Biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification and to you. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button. Whilst you are watching, please leave any comments below if you're unsure about anything and let us know if it's your first time watching our videos so we can send you our free revision materials. We also have helpful timestamps below for each part of the video to help guide you through the specification. So let's get started. Hello and welcome to this tutorial on decomposition. So we briefly mentioned decomposition in the previous tutorial, but we're going to have a look at it in a lot more detail now. So we're going to have a look at some factors affecting decomposition, we'll then have a look at some really simple calculations, nothing to worry about, and then we'll look at the application of decomposition in farming. So these are your specification points, come back to the, them at the end, make sure you understand everything, and if you don't, just rewind to that point in the video and give it another go. So decomposition is measured by the rate of decay, and the rate of decay itself is a measurement of the speed at which decomposers break down dead organisms. So there are several factors affecting the rate of decay. We have temperature, water, availability of oxygen. So memorise those, and let's go on to see why. So just like with enzymes, decomposers have an optimum temperature. So if the temperature is too low, the rate of decay will reduce as the enzymes required for decomposition will work too slowly. Whereas if the temperature is too high, the rate of decay will drop dramatically as the enzymes required for decomposition will denature due to the high temperatures. So we get a change in the, in the tertiary structure or secondary structure or quaternary structure of the enzyme because of heat breaking down those weak hydrogen bonds. And therefore, um, the enzymes see nature and the decomposer will die. Now water, so if the decomposers are starved of water the rate of decay decreases. Whereas if there is a lot of water there will be a high rate of decay as some decomposers use enzymes that are secreted onto dissolved organic matter and work through absorption. So we need enough water for optimum um, decomposing. Now, in general, oxygen is required to allow decomposers to respire. So decomposers must respire in order for true decompos decomposition to take place. As more and more oxygen is made available, more and more decomposition also occurs. But do note that some decomposers do work in anaerobic conditions too. Right, OK, let's have a look at some simple calculations. So rate of decay, as with any rate of change, it's just the change in a value divided by the time period. So therefore, if we get values of decomposition, we can calculate the rate of decay. So for example, here, we can look at this table. We can see that we have our mass decreasing here. That's our decomposition occurring over time in hours. Always note the units. So we would just do, to calculate the rate of change, we would just do change in mass measured in grams because we can see it's measured in grams there over time in hours as it says in the table so whatever so what are our units for our rates it would be whatever the number comes out with in grams per hour since we're doing grams divided by the hours okay so really really simple so you can either calculate that from these raw numbers so for example here you would do 200 minus 130 over 30 hours. That's grams. And that's equal to 2.33 grams per hour to three significant figures. Okay, I always like to give it to three significant figures or to two decimal places just to be safe with the examiner. So, and it's really important you remember your units too. Or alternatively, if we plot this data on a graph, the gradient is the rate of decay. So you can calculate the gradient by using the phrase rise over run. So the rise is the change in the y-axis, the run is the x-axis. So if they give you a graph like this and ask you to calculate 
the decay. You do rise over run, or I like to use up over down, but I know rise over run is more common. So you would measure from some points that as far apart as possible. So you would calculate your rise or your up and divide that by, sorry, I did not mean to write up over down, I meant to write, <laughs> that doesn't make sense, does it? I meant to write up over across, that's what I like to use. Or you can use rise over run. And so that's your rise, that's your run, that's your up, that's your across. So really simple, you just calculate that gradient and that gives us an average um, change in mass over time or the rate of decay. Okay, so final tutorial points, having a look at the application of decomposition. So farmers can use decomposition in their favour to provide conditions for the best possible crop yield. So compost is the product of dead plants, and adding worms to the compost increases the rate of decomposition. And actually, farmers provide strong conditions for decomposition, then apply compost to their crops in order to allow decomposition to occur and provide new mineral ions for the crops to use. And adding worms increases this rate of decomposition even more. So the compost therefore acts as a natural fertiliser, with the most important element recycled is nitrogen. So this is conversed into nitrate ions, which are required for protein building in plants. So nitrate ions are really, really important for plants. And anaerobic decay can actually be used to produce methane, a fuel. So not only can we use decomposition in farming, but we can also use it as a fuel. This is because when decomposers act in the absence of oxygen, they produce carbon dioxide and methane, hence producing methane, the fuel. Also, decomposition can be useful in a biogas generator. So manure is placed in a biogas generator. Specific crops have been developed to form the organic material for this process. The anaerobic decomposition then is used to form methane, which can be combusted as an energy source, as we can see here. So you can see that we have a really wide application of decomposition. OK, so let's have a look at some practice questions. So I'll read through these statements. So you can then give the video a pause, have a go, and we'll go through the answers. So A, decomposition requires the death of a crop or animal. B, compost decomposition leads to the production of nitrates. C, to know the rate of decay, we only need to know the change in mass of a sample. And D, there is no such thing as too hot for a decomposer. So give this a pause here and we will go over the answers in a few moments. Okay, let's go through some answers. So A, decomposition requires the death of a crop or animal. No, decomposition is ongoing. B. Compost decomposition leads to the production of nitrates. Yes, and nitrate ions are really important for plant growth. To know the rate of decay, we only need to know the change in mass of a sample. False, we also need to know the time over which this change in mass has occurred. And D. There is no such thing as too hot for a decomposer. Also false. Too hot and we get denaturation of the enzymes in the decomposer and therefore a loss of functioning and a lower um, rate of decay. So that's all our tutorial points covered for today. Well done, quite a meaty tutorial, but I hope that made sense to you. And if not, do go back, find those specification points that don't make sense and give it another go in the tutorial. Well done for today, and I'll see you for the next session. Thanks for watching this free video from Study Mind. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe to catch our newest videos by clicking below and leave a comment on a topic you'd like a video on. Click here to watch more videos in our series for GCSE Biology or visit our website studymind.co.uk for free past paper compilations by topic and specification.